So what? I hope you're having a great start to your week so far. And thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. You know, Memorial Day is coming up and that kind of signals the beginning of summer. It's so exciting. Hopefully things are getting warmer in your neck of the woods. And, you know, that means 4th of July is right around the corner. And in the spirit of all of these things, I thought I would give you a cute patriotic themed project today that we can work on together. Um, You know, at Sulky, we have so many great resources at sulky.com. You can find patterns, designs, projects, links to the blog, links to our video series, plus all of the great Sulky products that you know and love, kits, um, all of those kinds of things. But did you know that we also have some specialty shops within the website? You can find our Beat Cancer Shop, which has a lot of breast cancer um, awareness-themed thread palettes and designs and resources. And we also have a patriotic shop. So if you go under our specialty shops at sulky.com, you will find links for all of those great pages where we have curated a bunch of different products Let's say you want to work on something patriotic and you need some inspiration. Head on over to the patriotic shop. And while you're there, you will find banners like this. So here are a couple of great home deck projects you could start working on. We have our quilted Team USA applique placemat project that features our sulky perfect applique fusible web. Just a really quick and easy placemat project you can make for outdoors or inside. And then we also have our July 4th denim machine embroidery placemat project. And if you head on over to the blog, which is blog.sulky.com, you can find these projects and grab up all the how-tos that you need to create them right there on the Sulky blog. So if you start off at the patriotic shop, these links, um, which are clickable right on these images will take you directly to those blog posts. Here is something else you might find interesting on that page, our Americana Cross Stitch Free Webcast. This project is all cross stitch. Isn't that a beautiful design? On that buffalo is featured a bunch of different Americana symbols. So you've got, you know, your mountains and your trees, your national park reference, um, the poppies, the pinwheels, all kinds of great stuff. We have kits of this available as well. So you can create your own Americana bison um, image as pictured, and you can grab up that kit at a great price. You can register for that free webcast. And even though it already happened, This content is still available to you on demand at any time. So if you haven't registered for this already, you can still do so. Watch the entire event, grab up a kit, and create your own Americana Cross Stitch creation. So that is also the case with all of our online events at sewingonline.sulky.com. If you miss the live event, be sure to still register because you can access all of that great stuff online at your leisure. If you missed our Scissor Stasher webcast, which happened last Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, I recognize some of your names and I saw you participating last week. So give me a thumbs up or an emoji of some kind. Let me know if you joined our Scissor Stasher. And if you haven't yet, again, you can still register for it. Watch the video in its entirety, participate and create your own Scissor Stasher. All right. Speaking of commenting, liking, giving me those great emojis, we have a wonderful giveaway today. And I have featured this before, but seeing as how Memorial Day is coming up, I thought it was a great time to revisit. So I will be talking about our Uncle Sam machine embroidery collection. So one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, liking, all of those good things to engage with our post here today will win the Uncle Sam Machine Embroidery Collection. Yay. Okay, hold on. 
The sound effect is better than my voice. Let's be real. All right. So that's today's giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching and engaging with the post. I am going to feature our red, white, and cute design today. Now, this collection, if you purchase it, it comes with all six designs that you see here on this image, and each design is available in three sizes. You will get a design or all the designs uh, sized for a four by four hoop, a five by seven hoop, and a nine by 10 hoop. So you can create lots of different sized projects just with the one purchase of the entire embroidery collection. And I'm sure you recognize the Uncle Sam hat. I featured that on a table runner project a little while back. And then I also featured our summer nights design, which is in the middle on the top row there. It's a little mason jar full of fireflies and the little glowy butts of the fireflies are stitched out in sulky poly sparkle thread. This is our 30 weight polyester thread that has flecks of metallic running through it. So it gives a nice sparkle and glitz to these machine embroidery designs. And also available is our Uncle Sam machine embroidery palette. Now, when we say palette, that means all the threads that are featured in these designs are included with your purchase. So not only will you get the entire design collection, but you also get all the thread spools needed to do all of your stitch outs. And this palette actually comes with 11 spools of thread. And some of those are that great poly sparkle. So these designs were digitized to have portions of poly sparkle within. And the other threads are just our 40 weight rayon, which is what we typically use for machine embroidery. So when you're thinking about using the poly sparkle thread or maybe substituting it for a design that is digitized for 40 weight, you need to take some things into account. Now, a 30 weight thread is going to be thicker than a 40 weight thread. So the larger the number, the thinner the thread. OK, so 30 weight thread is going to be thicker. Now, when you substitute it in a design that's digitized for 40 weight, if you think about it, that thread is going to fill more space than the 40 weight thread would, even though it's just, you know, a difference of 10, right? It actually does make a difference if you are stitching out a de design that has a dense fill stitch, um, satin stitch areas, things where there are a lot of passes of thread to fill a certain area. So the 30 weight thread is going to fill that area much quicker than a 40 weight thread would because of the weight. So when you are substituting this thread in a different design collection, um, you want to be sure to use it in areas of open, uh, open areas like outline designs or um, even a zigzag that's not a super uh, narrow satin fill, um, things like that. And it will, in my experience, work out fine for you. Do a test stitch out. You can advance through your design just for the area that you want to substitute and do a test stitch out to make sure that the 30 weight thread is going to perform well for you and not sort of overlap itself. If it gets too dense, um, because of the thread weight, you can have these bulletproof designs that don't move when your fabric moves. And we don't want that, um, you know, depending on the project. So good to note that this design collection was actually digitized for that 30 weight thread in certain areas. So if you look at the red, white and cute design that I'm featuring today, the white wording is actually stitched out in a silver sparkle poly sparkle thread. So that portion of the design was digitized for 30 weight thread. So if you were to conversely use a 40 weight thread in that area, it might be more open than you want it to be. Now, in this case, these are just straight stitches, so it would probably work out OK. But if that were a total fill stitch, the 40 weight thread wouldn't fill it as much as the 30 weight thread. Is everyone with me? All right. 
I thought that we might just need to chat about that because I know you're all going to want the Poly Sparkle thread if you haven't tried it already. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments because if you have, I'm sure you are addicted. <laughs> it's so fun to use. We do have the entire Poly Sparkle line available in a Sulky Slimline collection. A Slimline, that means that it comes with a great storage box. Who has slim lines out there? This is one of my petite slim lines. I just happen to have it right next to me because I'm doing a handwork project that I'm gonna share with you in the coming weeks. But this is one of my petite slim lines and this is such a great way to store your thread, to organize it by color, um, to keep it organized. That way, when you run out of a color, you can kind of reference what color you need to restock in your collection. Plus, you can hang it on your wall with some hooks and always have it near and at hand. And then when you open it up, it actually separates as well along the center. So you could hang it open if you want to and then close it up when not, at, not in use and just hang it on the one hook. But anyways, we have the entire Poly Sparkle line available in a slim line so you can get all the fabulous colors. But again, this is the petites, so I'm not showing you the correct thing, but that's what I had right next to me. So if you are new to the slimline containers, they are just such a nice way to organize thread. And don't we all need organization tips? I know I do. Um, the slimlines have really helped me because I have the full line of everything sulky, of course, so that I can bring you the very best education and projects and patterns and all that good stuff. And, you know, keeping it all straight, um, I wouldn't be able to do that without the slimlines for sure. All right, so back to the project at hand. I am going to give you a tutorial on how to embroider a t-shirt. And we have talked about this before in the past, but this time we're using this rather open design. And I'm gonna be showing this to you on a child size t-shirt which is a little bit more challenging to embroider because we have less t-shirt fabric to contend with when we are trying to hoop it and make sure that our excess t-shirt fabric doesn't get caught in the stitching. So instead of actually hooping the shirt, we are going to do what I call hoopless embroidery. And yes, we are still using a hoop, but we are not going to hoop the t-shirt itself. All right, so here is the cute little t-shirt we are going to make. And this is one of my favorite models in the universe. My little, one of my little Twinkies, I call them. <laughs> Modeling it so proudly. So here we have the shirt, red, white, and cute. I wanted to show you, try to show you that poly sparkle. It's so great for 4th of July. Um, you know, to add a little bit of metallic, you know, pizzazz to your projects. Find some firework designs. Um, in our Uncle Sam collection, we have this frame design that is made up of firework bursts, and that would look really cute on a drawstring bag or personalize some t-shirts with a monogram or something inside um, or another little design of your choice. And I just love it so much. All right. So first things first, we need to hoop our stabilizer. So like I said, we're not gonna hoop our t-shirt. We are going to secure it to the stabilizer that's in the hoop, and that is going to stabilize it enough for the embroidery process. So we're going to start with Sulky Sticky Plus. This is one of my favorite stabilizers. You all hear me talk about it all the time. I have bolts of it. I use it so, so much. It's a tearaway stabilizer that has a an adhesive backing to it. So you can stick your object to it in the hoop for all those unhoopables, you know, collars of a t-shirt, um, maybe the cuff of a sock, um, things that won't fit in the hoop or things that you shouldn't hoop because of their fabric or fiber content. So for example, a velveteen, or even a corduroy, or something plushy. You don't wanna hoop those types of fabrics because the hoop can actually damage those 
um, the nap of the fabric. And it can result in what we call hoop burn, where the hoop actually has damaged it to a point that is not recoverable. So to avoid that, we're going to do this hoopless embroidery. And you should really do this with every t-shirt project because t-shirts are made out of knit. Knit is stretchy. If we hoop the knit, um, I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but in general, if we hoop the knit, what's going to happen is it's going to stretch along that inner hoop ring. Even if we have stabilized it to the nines and we've taken all kinds of precautions to make sure it's not going to stretch, once you pop that inner hoop ring in and you tighten up your hoop screw, it is going to stretch along that inner hoop ring. And even though it looks nice and flat and straight during the stitch out, you go to pop out the inner hoop ring when you are done and then your knit fabrics wanna go back to where they started. And that's how we get puckering around our design. Okay, so we're gonna hoop just the Sulky Sticky Plus in the hoop. You'll notice that the paper side is facing up. We've got our Sulky Sticky Plus little logo on there, and there are grid lines. Now, if you hoop your Sticky Plus um, straighter than I did in this picture, you can use those grid lines to line up your t-shirt as well. So it's a great placement aid to help you make sure that your design is perfectly placed. Now, there's really nothing worse than <laughs> you've finished your t-shirt, you put it on, and your design is just slightly off center. Um, I mean, hey, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, we like to be able to read our t-shirt uh, straight across, right? So we're going to use every placement. Um, excuse me, I thought that my phone was off. We're going to use every placement tip we can use um, to make sure that it's placed properly. All right. Excuse me, I had to turn my phone off. Okay. So now we're going to use another one of my favorite tools. Again, I know I talk about this all the time. I know so many of you have this already but it is the Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. I have to say that slowly. <laughs> and it comes in this little nifty storage sleeve and it has a rubber tip on it because this end is very sharp, okay? This is what we are going to use to slice through only the paper backing of the stabilizer. And this is specifically made to just go through that filmoplast, that paper coating. So it doesn't slice through the stabilizer itself. Now, if you have done this technique in the past, you may have used a pin or even the tip of scissors to score through that paper backing. And as you well know, sometimes you can slice right through the whole thing and then you have to start all over. And you either have to toss the sticky plus away or use it in a smaller hoop, um, or patch it somehow, and we're just compromising the stitch out when we do those things. So I highly suggest grab one of these up. They're relatively inexpensive. They're about seven bucks at sulky.com, and it's so, so worth it to have the right tool for the job, let me tell you. So go ahead and score through that paper backing. And again, the great thing about this grid on the Sticky Plus is that you don't have to score it within the inner hoop line. Um, you can if you want to expose all of that adhesive, but you can use a template of your design and just score along the perimeter of your design. And there is your placement aid. So now when you place your t-shirt on that sticky surface, you know exactly the design perimeter and you can square up your shirt so that it's in the right place. So after you uh, score through the paper backing, now we're just going to simply lift up the paper backing along one of the corners. You can use your trusty tool for that as well, just to loosen up a corner, and then just peel it away to reveal that adhesive on the stabilizer. Now we need to mark our t-shirt, another placement aid. Now, if you have a placement technique that you like to do every single time. Maybe you have placement stickers. 
Maybe you have a camera on your machine that will show you exactly where your design is going to stitch out onto your fabric. Um, there are so many different placement aids out there. There are even uh, uh, placement tools that are specific to t-shirts. I'm actually gonna look this up um, and make sure it is still available before I speak out of turn. Um, but it just got me thinking. Again, use the, the tools that are made for these things to make your life easier, especially if you're gonna be stitching out a lot of t-shirts. So what we have at sulky.com are a couple things. We have what's called an embroiderer's placement little helper, and that is a perfect pocket placement tool. If you are going to embroider a pocket onto a t-shirt, um, or a pocket onto anything, really. You could use that placement tool. We also have the Embroiderer's Placement Helper Perfect Shirt Placement Tool. And that is great for polos, for regular t-shirts like this. Um, it supports different neckline options. We have it in sizes um, small to large. And then we have another placement tool that's sized for extra large to XXXL. So depending on the size of your shirt, it'll show you exactly where you want your design to go so that it is in a pleasing uh, spot, right? So that's another thing to consider is when we're embroidering a t-shirt or anything really, a lot of the times we think to ourselves, we just want the design smack dab in the center, right? Well, for a shirt, sometimes that doesn't work out depending on your figure and the style of the shirt itself. So sometimes we want it, you know, above um, our chest area on the, you know, lapel. Um, but generally right in the center doesn't really seem to work. Now, for a kid's t-shirt, however, it's really cute to have it right in the center, especially if it's a large scale design. So I highly suggest you print a template of your design or uh, use whatever placement tool you want to use and kind of audition it onto the t-shirt. And then you're going to mark your vertical and horizontal cross marks to denote exactly how large um, your design is going to be on the shirt. So I have used a really great uh, fabric marker that is heat removable. This is one of those friction pens but it's a friction pen highlighter. I really love it. Anyways, um, so I'm using a friction pen highlighter to mark my center cross marks, and there they are. So I positioned the upper edge of the design about one inch lower than that neckline seam. And again, it's for a child's t-shirt. So you'll want to put this shirt either on the child or if you're making a shirt for yourself, after you've done those cross marks, put on the shirt and take a look at yourself in the mirror or look at you know the recipient and say, okay, yeah, that looks good. You might need to do some adjusting, again, depending on figure and the shirt style. So keep that in mind. Um, just, it can't hurt to just put it on real quick. And if you have a heat removable marking pen, or another marking pen or placement tool, sticker, that kind of thing that you can easily move, um, that is preferable. So once you have that, we're going to stick our shirt to the sticky stabilizer. So you have to turn your, your shirt wrong side out so that you can place your shirt right side up on the hoop. And you can see I have all this excess t-shirt fabric that I need to contend with during the stitch out. And if you're using a larger t-shirt, this is actually a little bit easier. You can almost um, like roll up that excess t-shirt fabric and kind of pin it or clip it out of the way. And you have ample space for your machine and needle to move around the stitch out. But for something like a kid's t-shirt or a onesie, you are basically embroidering in this tunnel. And you need to stick with your project during the entire stitch out, which is really recommended for any machine embroidery, but sp especially for something like this. And I always just have my finger at the ready so I can stop the stitch out if I notice that the machine 
or that the hoop is moving to a place in the design where my needle might be um, in contact with that excess fabric. And that way you can just quickly stop it so it doesn't continue to stitch out and then move over that excess fabric and do that area and then stop it again, move your excess fabric out of the way. So you're kind of embroidering almost blindly a little bit, especially with a onesie because that is really a small sort of tube of fabric. So just keep in mind that you can always start and stop your machine by manually pressing a button and making sure that your needle does not interfere with that fabric that you've rolled up or you know moved out of the way. Now, when you are moving it out of the way, it may lift up from that adhesive backing on the stabilizer. So you need to be really careful that you are moving that excess fabric very gently and you're not stretching the fabric out of shape. Again, we are embroidering on a knit here, right? And if we move it over and those knit fibers get skewed in the hoop, that's gonna affect our stitch out and it's gonna make our uh, t-shirt have like little waves or puckers in it when we're completed. So make sure it's nice and flat. There's no stretching during the stitch out as well. So here we are. It's going to start with that poly sparkle silvery metallic thread first. So that uh, portion of the design is directly in the, across the center. You can see it's crossing that horizontal placement line and it's about to stitch right through that vertical placement line. So we are right on target here with our placement marks, which are going to be removed when our stitch out is complete. And there is the stitch out complete. And it looks so great. You can see that part of the design, um, I did have to move those upper edges of the fabric away so that it could stitch out that star and the other portion next to the word red. So I did have to start and stop my machine, move that fabric over, have it embroider that portion of the design, stop it again, move the other fabric over, you understand. So now it's completed and we're going to remove the hoop from the machine. And we're going to basically lift up the shirt gently, which will tear it away from the stabilizer or tear the stabilizer away from the back of the work. And here is what that looks like. I have little stabilizer bits here and there to still remove, but you can take a pair of tweezers um, and get out as much as you can, okay? If you have a denser design with a little bit of fill stitches here and there, you can leave that stabilizer intact, you know, behind all of that stitching and just get as much as you can. Now what we're going to do, and I recommend this for any t-shirt project, even a t-shirt quilt, this is the best stabilizer for a t-shirt quilt. It is Sulky Tender Touch. Tender Touch, you'll even see this in ready to wear garments, um, like fleece, you know, fleece logo tees or logo jackets. Um, you'll find this in a lot of commercial um, uh, embroidered items. This is the layer of stabilizer that is fused to the back of the completed embroidery, which gives the embroidery a nice feel. You won't have any scratchy stitches next to your skin. It feels so nice and silky, and it doesn't interfere with the hand of the fabric. So it doesn't make, uh, it doesn't add sort of a crispiness, right, to your t-shirt still nice and lightweight and movable. However, where you apply this tender touch, it's not going to stretch like the rest of the t-shirt. So you want a piece that's just large enough to cover the embroidery, okay? So cut a piece of that, and we also recommend that you use pinking shears or a pinking blade on your rotary cutter or wavy edge scissors, something like that to trim up your tender touch. Um, it just allows for a better bond along the edges um, and it just lasts longer through a lot of washings and wearings and that type of thing. 
Oh, there's my wavy edge blade. So once you've trimmed that up, make sure that it fits and covers all of those embroidery stitches. And then just use a low to medium temp iron and lightly fuse that in place until it is there to stay. And there we have our finished embroidery. I should mention as well, if you use a different marking pen, let's say a water soluble marking pen um, or even an air soluble marking pen, um, sometimes those are permanent once you apply heat to them. So make sure before you add that tender touch that you have removed those types of fabric markers. Because I mean, ask me how I know I have just rendered things useless <laughs> and uh, it's so, so sad when you get to that point and then you totally forgot you had some markings there. So make sure to remove those. If they are heat removable, like the pen that I used, when you apply that tender touch, your markings will also disappear. So you're good to go. And yes, that poly sparkle can be ironed. Um, it. I try to keep my iron away from the right side of my embroidery, basically for everything that I do. Um, but if you must press on the right side, I would just use a press cloth, err on the side of caution. Um, sometimes our irons can be wicked hot and we don't realize it and we apply it to the thread and it can take some of that nice sheen away. Um, which is the whole reason we like to use rayon thread is for that beautiful sheen and um, nice glossy type of result. So keep that in mind. So here's our finished stitch out. So easy, so quick. This would make a great shirt to wear for everyone in the family for your July 4 festivities. Maybe you all go to fireworks and you're all wearing kind of the same type of shirt um, embroidered for the day and you take some family photos, that would be just so adorable. You could even make a little bandana for your furry friends and bring them along. Um, you know, since our furry friends mostly do not like fireworks, it would be nice to, you know, cuddle with them, give them some support. All right. And here's just another image of it worn. You can see there's still a great fit going on with the shirt. You can't even see the tender touch underneath um, and it just gives it a nice finished look and a perfect, perfect stitch out. So really cute. I hope you all enjoy this project and you want to go make lots of embroidered t-shirts. Again, I want to show you what our giveaway is today for one lucky person who is watching, commenting, liking, sharing, all of those good things you will receive the Uncle Sam Machine Embroidery Collection. And I will pick a winner in the next couple of days. So I wanna make sure that everyone has ample time to participate in the so what. All right, there's one more thing I wanna make sure that everyone is aware of, and I'm just trying to find the image of it because I realized that I did not load it into my video today. So bear with me just a moment. Um, for those of you who really enjoy our webcasts and video casts that we do over at sewingonline.sulky.com, um, and I hope you all do, I hope that you've had a chance to check it out because it's really a great experience. If you can't get in person to events or if you've never tried a virtual sewing event, where you get to just sit in the comfort of your own home. You can be next to your machine or on the couch or watching on your phone or on your tablet. You don't have to be at a computer even. If you haven't experienced any of these, I highly suggest you join us for our next free webcast with Cheryl Lynch of Cheryl Lynch Designs. Now, I'm still looking for the image. I am sorry, hold on one moment. Cheryl has been doing fusible applique on her quilts for years. And she noticed that we had this new uh, sulky, perfect applique fusible web. And she said, I have to get my hands on this. Um, I, you know, I do fusible applique like that's my jam. I have got to get my hands on this. So I sent her some, we had some chats. She showed me her latest design and I thought you all 
have to make this. It's so beautiful and it's such a great summary type of project. Um, you will just absolutely love the look of it. I know. I'm sorry. I'm getting to it. Hopefully. I don't know why it's taking so long for me to find it. Um, I had everything right next to me and then my computer just kind of is going wackadoo. Um, so who is familiar with Cheryl Lynch? Cheryl um, participated in our New Year's Eve event. She provided some prizes. And um, so we got to know her there. There we go. Oh, it's a little bit blurry. All right. So Cheryl has some really, really great quilt patterns on her site. It's Cheryl Lynch quilts.com. You will get to know her during this great event. But like I said, she has really perfected raw edge fusible applique. So if you've never tried that technique or if you have, but you want tips and tricks from an expert who has really made this her passion, please join us on June 14th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Eastern time over at sewingonline.sulky.com. Um, I put a link to that page directly so you can register right away in the description of today's post, which is where you will also find all the links for everything I talked about today. If you're not seeing it, be sure to click that little see more button and the whole description will pop out and you can click all the links and they will direct you exactly where you need to be. So for flower applique in the raw with Cheryl Lynch, again, that's June 14th. So coming up in a few weeks, Make sure you register. We already have kits on sale. So that great sale price will be good until June 14th at midnight. And if you would like to grab up your kit before the event, I highly suggest that you get one right away and get it while the sale is going on. All right, so we're going to make this four patch wall hanging, or you could call it a mini quilt. And it features Cheryl's uh, fabric line. So it, it, it's just so beautiful. Just for registering for this free webcast, you will receive a machine embroidery design, which is our mandala machine embroidery design from Sulky. And that design is also digitized for the Sulky Poly Sparkle thread. So you could use the same Poly Sparkle thread that you got in your Uncle Sam machine embroidery palette and stitch out your mandala design. Cheryl is gonna show us how to use that design to make a custom quilt label for our beautiful mandala mosaic masterpiece quilt that we will be learning how to make in June. So please join me for that free webcast and you will meet Cheryl and you'll learn everything you need to know about this layered applique technique. Um, the kit comes with all the fabrics you need, um, six spools of thread, I believe. There's some poly light for the bobbin. She uses rayon thread uh, for the beautiful applique stitches. And let's see, what else does it come with? It comes with some template plastic, which is really cool. So you can transfer your flower templates to a more permanent template plastic. She's gonna show us all how to do that as well. So there's lots of learning to be had. So make sure to register for this free webcast and join me live over there at sewingonline.sulky.com. This is a great summer project to put on your, um, you know, sewing queue and get it in the rotation and make sure that you finish it up in time to enjoy it this summer. All right. So I think those are all the updates I have for you. I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and that it is the springboard to your summer adventures. And I would like to see all of your great t-shirt projects. So be sure to join our Sulky Facebook group. It is called Sulky Stitch and Post. And all you have to do is when you are on Facebook, just search on the little search toolbar for Sulky Stitch and Post, and then click on join. And then we will let you in to our great community over there at the Sulky Stitch, Stitch and Post. Um, what do we do there? We post pictures of our projects, whether they are in progress or finished. We ask each other questions. We bounce ideas off of each other. Um, every so often, I give away a free design. Um, we're going to be having some special offers and some great things for everybody 
who um, belongs to that Facebook group. So be sure to join us over there as well if you haven't already. Again, I do recognize some of your names, so that is great. Also, we are um, coming up on American Sewing Guild Conference. And I know I've been talking about this for so long, but the reason is I haven't done in-person teaching in so long because of COVID. And I will finally be back at it at the American Sewing Guild Conference. You, I believe you could still register and you can still sign up for my classes if you would like to take them in person. Um, I will be teaching a couple of technique lectures and a hands-on class, and it's going to be just such a great time. It's in San Antonio, Texas, and conference is from June 30th to July 3rd, so a beautiful time of year to be in San Antonio. And we will be live streaming for So What during conference. And let's see if I can bring this up here. I will be announcing our Casey Duffel photo contest winner live on So What from San Antonio. So if you have not voted on your favorite Casey Duffel bag yet, please be sure to do so. The link to vote is in the description of today's post. That is also the same link if you would like to enter your cut Casey Duffel bag into the mix and start getting votes so that you can win the Casey Duffel Photo Contest. You could win over $1,900 worth of items to outfit the sewing room of your dreams. Some of which are this brother's sewing machine. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So Brother Sewing has generously provided this fantastic workhorse of a sewing machine and if you win the Casey Duffel Photo Contest, you will win this machine. You will also win threads and stabilizers from Sulky. I think it's over $400 worth of thread and stabilizers and great notions. You will also win a one month cork membership um, from Sally Tomato. Sally Tomato designed the Casey Duffel uh, uh, pattern. So we are in partnership with them. And you will also win a cutting bundle from Havel's Sewing. Um, that's where I got my great purple pinking shears and all my great purple handled tools. Love that. Um, let's see. You also win um, a membership to the American Sewing Guild uh, Fashion School. And so there's so many things to win. And I wish you all the best of luck. And I hope that you participate in our Casey Duffel photo contest. And if you have no idea what the Casey Duffel is head on over to sewingonline.sulky.com and search for the Casey Duffel video cast. We presented that video cast back in February and it's a totally um, virtual class on the Casey Duffel. And I provide all the machine embroidery instructions for your optional pocket embellishment, how to work with uh, sewing leather, um, how to create structure in the tote, um, how to create different straps and handles. So there's a lot, a lot of information in that video cast. Um, and we thank Sally Tomato for that partnership as well. So you can head on over and take the video cast. We also still have Casey kits available. So you have until June 30th to enter the Casey Photo Duffel contest. So you can still grab up a kit, still make your Casey Duffel in time to be included in that great, great contest opportunity. All right. I think I have mentioned all of the business we needed to take care of today. So again, thank you so much for joining me on this So What. I look forward to meeting you all here again next Tuesday. And by the way, we are also now streaming on Twitch. So we are now on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And you can choose which platform you would like to view us on every week. So thanks again, everybody, for joining. I really appreciate you spending your uh, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is for you, with me. And I'll see you next Tuesday for another So What.